Now, if you don't know what GSA stands for, it stands for Gay Straight Alliance, not Girl Scouts of America, although we do eat a lot of cookies. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Sean. Today, I'm going to show you how to start and manage GSA. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'd like to say that every school is different and every GSA is different. So even though I tell you that I had all the stuff set up for my GSA, doesn't necessarily mean that you guys have to follow that. Now first things first, if you don't have a GSA already set up, you need to get a teacher sponsor. Once that's done, you're going to have to ask yourselves just a few generic club questions such as what day are our meetings going to be? Will they be after school or before school? Are we going to have club dues? Are we going to have a t-shirt once a month, once a week, bi-weekly? In my GSA, we had meetings every Tuesday morning and this kind of avoided that whole issue with sports and other clubs being after school because we had so many people that were in marching band or theater and their practices were after school almost every day so we try to avoid that kind of issue so i definitely recommend going around and asking when other sports and clubs are meeting but also get an idea of when your teacher sponsor can meet because if they can't do thursday afternoons because they have a meeting that day or they can't do certain mornings because they have help sessions you just kind of have to work around that now, I don't know about your school, but in our school, we had something called club fair. And club fair was basically this way. In the beginning of the year, all the clubs got together in the gym uh, during lunch. And they were allowed to kind of show other kids and students, hey, this is us and this is what we do. You also want to bring as much rainbow gear as possible to club fair. Obviously, that's kind of how you're being represented. And it'll get people's attention. This can be stuff from the flags to stickers. We even had pens that were in rainbow line. So definitely know that you're probably going to get a lot of hate as well at your booth. Either if that's someone just walking by and whispering very disrespectful terms, or if it's people directly coming up to you. We had some people who would walk up to us and be like super nice and friendly, but when they went to write down their name on our sign-up sheet, they wrote profanity or just really like nonsense on our sheet. I remember this one time this guy came up to us and I wasn't there at the time but my friend was there watching the booth and this guy kind of in a snidey tone walked up to her and was like oh I'm sorry I can't join your club because I'm straight and she tried to explain to him that the club is literally called gay straight alliance straight is in the name and it is an alliance and she also explained that she was straight and that the president of the club is straight but he threw her off and was really mean about it and claim that she wasn't straight. So just know that you're gonna get people like that. And sometimes you just kinda have to shrug it off and look at that there are so many other people who want to join your club and that you are providing such an awesome place and a safe space for those people to be themselves. All right, for the first GSA meeting, you're gonna have to give people a little bit more information on what you guys do in GSA. Kind of just give them a basic rundown of what each meeting is gonna involve and answer any other questions that they may have about what you guys are gonna be doing. Also make sure you ask for allergies because if you guys are gonna have like a party, or if you're gonna bring in food every meeting, you need to know that in advance. And then the main thing you wanna do for the first meeting is have an icebreaker. Icebreakers can be a little bit uncomfortable for some people. So instead we had uh, just the name game. And the name game was really nice. It just asked for your preferred name, your preferred pronouns, and then something about you. But what's really nice about the name game is that if someone didn't want to go, they didn't have to. We could just skip on to the next person. All right, we got the first meeting out of the way. Now we can move on to brainstorming. Now I'm gonna try to restrain myself from going too in depth on each one, just because this video is getting really long and I don't wanna rant all day long to you guys. So in no particular order, I'm just gonna list out a bunch of ideas and maybe just touch up on each one to give you a better idea of how I ran my GSA and what we did each meeting. So to start, we did the ABCs of LGBT. This meeting is better to do like in the beginning of the year because then people have a better idea and they can understand terms as you go along in to the meetings later on. You guys can do a volunteer service or do a bake sale to raise money for groups that are LGBTQIA plus supporting. Kind of towards the beginning of the year, you also want to do something like going over the list of holidays. Holidays meaning like National Coming Out Day, Trans Day of Remembrance, Ace Visibility Day, Ally Week. And Ally Week is really important because there's probably going to be more LGBTQIA plus students in your group than allies but they still need to be recognized because they are there to show their support. 
Also make sure that you mention when your local pride is because you guys could maybe take a field trip there. Kids are done in June, but for us personally it's done in October, so it's a little bit different. I decided to separate Day of Silence from the holiday list just because it is a very controversial topic. And you guys can look that all up on your own, but if your GSA and school does decide that you want to do a Day of Silence, you guys are going to need to prepare ahead of time. Now you can spend a ton of money on like stickers to hand out to people for Day of Silence, but what we did one week ahead was just to make these silence bands and we also did support bands. And you just put it around your arm and you wear it. Um, you guys are also gonna need a piece of paper for the people who are being silent that day. Basically just explains to teachers what you're doing and why you're doing it. We had this tradition in our GSA where we would read this book about gay penguins and it was really cute and it's a true story. It's called uh, Entango Makes Three and it's actually banned in a few areas. So we would call it Banned Book Day, but it's really nice because it allows for the group to kind of relax, just come together and enjoy like a children's book. It's really short, which is really nice because some meetings are, you know, only 15 minutes long. But yeah, having that meeting that kind of steps back from the usual discussions of politics or deep discussions or coming out, it's nice to just sit around and maybe you guys can bring some snacks and enjoy a book. YouTubers, have people ahead of time submit YouTubers and videos that they felt were inspiring or helpful when they were coming out or they just really thought was good for the group to see. So you can make a list of the YouTubers and kind of hand that out to people during the meeting and then you can have videos being played in the background. But I thought that meeting was really important because YouTube, when I first came out personally, was the community that I could go to to get questions answered. That being said, you could also do a meeting on celebrities because celebrities have brought so much awareness to the community and it's really important that they also get recognized. Each year I kind of slip this question into a meeting just either at the beginning or at the end to get an idea of where our school kind of sat with this. So everyone raised their hand and then I would say, keep your hand up if you heard the term that's so gay in the last month. And usually like everyone left their hand up and then on the second time I would say, all right, keep your hand up if you've heard it in the last week. And kind of like a few went down. But what was so surprising, especially for my first year, was when I said yesterday. And majority of people still kept their hands up. It's really eye-opening because not many people think about it when they have their main friend group that all supports each other. And, you know, you don't really hear any of that outside. All right, one of our more serious topics was the coming out discussion. And that was basically kind of a more personal touch on our meetings because it allowed people to come up to the front where I usually stand and they could talk and tell their story of coming out, whether it be for friends, family, teachers, and some of them were really funny and some of them were really sad and it just kind of allowed people to speak and if they wanted to get advice from the group they could or maybe it was just so that they could get it off their chest. Alright back to the list I just want to touch up on how you can kind of talk to your group in a more interactive way. Past presidents in my group had used PowerPoint and Prezi a lot um, but I didn't really like that because it reminded me too much of like a classroom setting so instead I used something called Kahoot and Kahoot was kind of like this cool interactive competition between all of the kids in the class and in the end there was like a top five list so we had like prizes for the people who won. It would be like Skittles and light up stuff and rainbow gear. It was really cool. And this just allowed for like more of a interactive activity feel so that people could answer the questions of the Kahoot rather than just listening to you with stuff out on a PowerPoint, which I suppose is what I'm doing right now by just talking this really long video. Also make sure that you guys are up to date on all the current news. I was president for the 2017 election, and of course that was very nerve-wracking for a lot of people. So after the election, I had a timeline that we made up on the board and a bunch of articles scattered about on Mike Pence and Trump's viewpoints throughout like their history on the LGBTQI community. And that just kind of provided resources for better understandings so that people could form their own opinions and viewpoints on our new president. Maybe you guys could do something like Poetry Out Loud, where you guys have people come and bring like an instrument if they want to sing a song, or they could do poetry. Meet up with other groups and clubs within your school, like the Young Democrats Club, or you could even meet with the Young Republicans Club and have like a discussion. And don't forget to reach out to other GSAs in your area. 
we also had one activity where we went over supportive companies in the area. So we had the logo of the company up and people got to guess if they were like more supportive or not so supportive for like giving trans insurance or just being overall inclusive. Now stereotypes were probably one of the biggest topics that we talked about in the group and I could write an entire library about this but basically we want to run over the good and bad of them within the community. Have guest speakers, whether it's someone that you met outside of the school in a support group or it's a teacher or student within the school who want to talk. This definitely comes in handy, especially when someone who's pan, for example, and pansexual awareness week comes up, they can talk in the group and kind of like express who they are and just show their pride. Make sure you ask the people in your group what they want to discuss and what they want to go over because if there's something that they have in mind, then you should let them talk and let them speak. Now please don't be discouraged if not many people come. We had so many people who would walk up to me and say, hey, I'm sorry, I really can't make the meeting because my parents don't know I'm out and this is kind of like a hard situation since they are my only ride to school. You know, some people come to school and they have to deal with bullying from either just their peers or their friends about being who they are and then they go home and they can't come out to their own parents. So having one day out of the week or the month or whatever that they can read about cute gay penguins and just smile and have some type of support group to go to. That's amazing. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any more questions or any ideas for future videos, just comment below. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Sean. Oh. Good start. Our school didn't allow us to bring food, so we had these really cool stickers. We had these really cool stickers that we handed out. Look at that. Look at that penguin's face. I wonder if I could just... Yes. The girl penguins start noticing the boy penguins, and the boy penguins start noticing the girls. When the right girl and the right boy find each other, they become a couple. I just spent like 15 minutes rereading this entire book three times. Stereotypes were one of our biggest discuss- <coughs> Oh, I'm dying. Stay hydrated.